After more than a week of protests in Portland demanding change, the police bureau has a new chief. Thank you for joining us for KGW News at 5 o'clock. I'm Laurel Porter. Chuck Lavelle is replacing Chief Jamie Rush, who stepped down today after six months on the job. Pat Doris has the details on her resignation and replacement. Is stand up and say we when Portland Police Chief Jamie Resch stepped up to the podium at noon today, she dropped a verbal bombshell. Yesterday, I called Mayor Wheeler and I asked him to support me and to support the Portland Police Bureau in being the beginning of the change that this city needs. I believe this change starts with trust and it absolutely must come from the heart. I have asked Chuck Lavelle to step into the role as the chief of the Portland Police Bureau. She did what no Portland police chief has done in recent memory, stepped down in the middle of a crisis because she thought it would be best for the community. She said her replacement, Chuck Lavelle, grew up with a heart for serving others and is the perfect person for the job. And yesterday when I was talking to him and explaining to him why I was making this decision and why I felt he was the right person for this decision, he made a very important statement. He said, I've never wanted to be in the role of a leader. And I said, that's exactly why you are the right person. You never wanted it. You were meant for it. Resch became chief just six months ago. The mayor said she talked with him about making the move yesterday around noon. Lavelle was sworn in 24 hours later and said it's all happened very fast. To say this was unexpected would be an uh, understatement. Um, I, I told Chief Resch uh, over the last few weeks that I would do everything in my power to help her through these challenging times and that um, I'd be at her disposal to help lift her up and help her be successful. He also asked the community to remember police are doing a difficult job and that they are also part of the community. We have to remember when they don't have those uniforms on, there are community members. They're sitting next to us in church. They're dropping their kids off at the same schools our kids go to. They're behind us in the line at the grocery store. And we can never lose sight of the fact that there are way more good police officers than there are bad ones. Chuck Lavelle spent time in the Air Force, then nearly two decades working his way up in the Portland Police Bureau. He's run the human trafficking detail, been a volunteer for Lines for Life, worked as a crisis negotiator for 10 years, and since 2017 has led the Bureau's behavioral health unit that specializes in dealing with people suffering a mental health crisis. At the announcement today, several prominent black community leaders said he is exactly what the city needs right now. This is historic. And if people are watching Portland, something's happening today. And I'm so grateful for my brothers and sisters that are here to be a witness to that and your support for Chuck. Chuck, it's an honor to know you. I am very proud that you're in this position. And I know there are going to be some stormy days, but we'll be right there with you. How can we give the community what it needs? And right now, today, I'm hopeful because today the community got what it needed. We didn't have to look outside to find somebody to come and help us because everything that we need is already in our community. The new chief also worked as a school resource officer at Jefferson High School. Councilor Donald Dixon said he cared and made a difference. The kids were very comfortable with him and they know they could go to him and let him know what was going on. He could be abreast of everything that was happening, the heartbeat of the school, the heartbeat of the community and what was going on. Chief Lavelle said he knows the job will be hard and that he's reluctant to make any sweeping changes at the moment. Long term, Chief Lavelle said he'd like to see officers get back to patrolling small districts so they get to know the people that they're supporting and helping. That's probably for the future. But in the immediate term, his elevation into this office sends a loud, clear signal that change has arrived. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. The Portland Police Bureau is facing a lawsuit over its use of tear gas during protests. The group Don't Shoot Portland wants them to stop using it. Police have been using it a lot lately. They call it CS gas, which is the powdered form. And they claim you stop feeling the effects when you walk away. Mayor Ted Wheeler says tear gas should not be used unless there is a serious threat. He hasn't banned it yet, but says that remains an option. We will eliminate CS gas provided that there are alternatives that do not require a higher use of force and do not put lives in danger. And so that is an open conversation and it's one that the council is actively engaged in. 
Criminology and sociology professor Randy Blazak documented some of last week's protests and breathed tear gas in the process. He says the gas works to get rid of a crowd, but it also works against law enforcement in the long run. When you use a noxious agent like that, you anger people. You want you bring people into the fight. People who see it as an injustice are now going to be showing up at these rallies thinking, you know, all cops are the bad guys. Doctors are weighing in on tear gas, too, with COVID-19 concerns. The president of OHSU says the release of airborne droplets through tear gas induced coughing could accelerate the spread of COVID-19 and lead to a surge in new cases. Now to the coronavirus pandemic. Oregon is seeing a spike in cases right now. This graph shows how many cases the state has seen over the past few months, and you can see a big jump here over the last few days. 146 new cases were reported yesterday. That is the highest single day total since the pandemic began. On Saturday, Oregon reported 93 new cases. Doctors say the increase is tied to several factors, including more widespread testing, contact tracing, and workplace outbreaks. One of those workplaces is Pacific Seafood in Newport. Keeley Chalmers shows us how health officials in the coastal town are moving quickly to minimize the spread. At least 124 employees who work at Pacific Seafood in Newport have tested positive for COVID-19. The outbreak concentrated at the Pacific Shrimp Processing Facility. According to the company, the majority of the employees, all but six, did not report any symptoms. The discovery came after the company tested workers at all five of its Newport facilities. Operations at all five plants have been suspended. Meantime, state and county public health officials are conducting contact tracing to reach out to anyone who may have been exposed. There is going to be some risk in Lincoln County. The Oregon Health Authority does not believe there is any risk of the virus spreading through the food from the plant. However, it does say there will be some risk to the Newport community. We hope to, to minimize the risk by uh, having identified the folks who, who have the virus, uh, advising them to isolate at home, following up on their contacts, advising them to quarantine for 14 days. Lincoln County is in phase one of reopening as it has been for three weeks now. The news of the outbreak has prompted some restaurants to shut down again. I can't speak for all of Newport, but I think it, it is a little bit sobering. It was a little bit, it's a little bit scary. After partially reopening his dining room two weeks ago, Sorella on Nye Beach co-owner Justin Wills has decided to close completely for the next few days to re-clean and reassess the situation. Just the numbers were high and I think it made us all kind of take a, force us to take a step back and take a broader look at things. Up until just a few days ago, Newport had relatively low numbers of coronavirus cases. But now with more than 100 new cases, including its first hospitalized case, the coastal community isn't taking any chances. But I think by doing our one little part, you know, hopefully we, we help out. Keely Chalmers, you know, KGW News. A Portland nonprofit is stepping up to help the black community, which has been hugely impacted by COVID-19. This weekend, Self Enhancement Inc. provided free coronavirus testing for African Americans. The organization's president says they had to put some pressure on state and local leaders in order to make the testing happen. We realized that COVID has been uh... <laughs> disproportionately impacting black people in our community and we've seen that all across the country so we wanted to, to push to make sure that black people in our local community had the opportunity to get tested. 300 people signed up to get tested Saturday and results are expected sometime this week. In Multnomah County, people of color, including the black community, Latinx and indigenous people, represent 40% of COVID-19 cases, but only make up 30% of the population. Oregon Health Authority said last week they plan to improve access to testing, treatment and support services for people of color.